We're almost halfway into 2022, and the great resignation is still making headlines. Many companies continue to struggle to fill open vacancies and retain employees in this worker-centric economy. Last year, more than 40 million Americans left their jobs. But where are all of these people going? With stimulus money long gone and prices rising across the board, it's vital to have some form of income flowing in. While some have quit and chosen to retire, the vast majority are still able to work. Experts like Jeremy Schiefling note that people are leaving their current jobs for positions that offer better pay, benefits, and other perks like an option to work remotely. Schiefling is a career expert and currently leads teacher outreach efforts at Khan Academy. He's also the co-author of Linked, Conquer LinkedIn, Get Your Dream Job, Own Your Future. He says there are tons of these jobs still available and that now is the best possible time to make a jump if you're considering it. So many people who have basically gone through the past two years have said to themselves, wait a second, this was this massive traumatic change in our society and I am still doing the same job that I was doing back in 2019 and I'm no happier doing it. Do I really want to be doing it in 2029 or do I want to use this inflection point to transform my life, transform my career? There's really never been a time when job seekers have had so much power in that delicate dance between employer and employee. And so if you're looking to get your first start or get a new start, now really is the time. And millions have done just that in recent years. The pandemic has resulted in many people questioning what's important in life. Am I content in this role? What am I really passionate about? How can I work smarter, not harder? This has resulted in some jumping ships, and there's no shame in doing this. Schiefling says that too often people assume that their career should be a straight, linear path. But that's not necessarily true. No one is going to start work today for General Motors and retire there with a gold watch in 40 years like their grandfather or grandmother may have. Instead, understand that your career is going to be kind of this dotted line from A to B to C, and even opportunities that you never conceived of when you first started your journey. And if you open yourself to those possibilities, you'll discover so much potential, both in the world and within you, that you didn't even know about. So for example, I started as a kindergarten teacher in Brooklyn. I went to work for LinkedIn and Apple and Google, all these tech giants. And I now work at Khan Academy, which blends those two things together, my passion for education and my passion for technology. And I had no idea 20 years ago when I started my career that something like that even existed. And yet by opening myself up, I was able to obtain it. In addition to changing jobs, there's also room to switch careers entirely. A role or industry that may have looked great at the get-go may no longer serve you anymore. And I do think that over time, our values and our needs shift. So for example, when I was young, I was all about learning as much as I could, growing as much as I could. Whereas in the middle of my career, it's more about how do I have the life that I want to build sort of the right structure for my family and the things that are really important to me at this stage. And so if you are just right out of school or you are sort of a couple years down that road, think to yourself, if my values really are about getting a chance to try new things, to expose myself to new opportunities, how can I make sure that I'm focusing on that versus just a fancy job title that looks great for my friends, but actually doesn't make me any smarter? If you are looking to make a change, don't count yourself out for a certain position if you don't fit the exact job description or don't have a college degree. Schiefling says that the pandemic and the Great Resignation have reset hiring norms in many ways. Because employers are having such a hard time hiring, and there are more job openings than there are unemployed people in this country right now, that means that this pedigree traditional hiring approach where we say, did you go to the right school? Do you know the right people? Just doesn't work anymore here in 2022. Instead, a lot of savvy firms are moving to skills-based hiring where they say, do you have experience with SQL? Do you have experience with A-B testing? Do you have experience with cloud-based marketing? If you've got these skills on your resume and you can actually walk that talk, that matters a lot more than just saying you went to some fancy pants school or you went to a school at all. So if you've ever said to yourself, oh, I've been locked out of my dream career by my lack of a formal education, know that that time has passed and now is the moment when your skills, your true ability are what's gonna get you in the door. One sector where many wanna get in the door is tech. 
This field offers high-paying roles, lots of perks, and there's opportunity for growth. Schiefling says you don't need to have a degree in computer science or engineering in order to work in tech. There are several high-paying, non-coding roles involving management, sales, strategy, and more. Got to be clear of what value you can add as a professional. Can you help us understand our audience better? Can you help us lead our teams better? Can you help us deliver results more impactfully? So be really clear about the value you can contribute. And so you will quickly realize there are a couple of really common roles in the tech industry. Things like product manager, product marketer, salesperson, account executive. And if you can figure out which of those roles are a really good fit for you, you can use that label, you can use all that language to register yourself as an insider. Once you figure out which positions best match up with your skills, the next step is building relationships with those already in tech. One of the really astounding pieces of data from hiring is that applicants who are referred by someone inside the firm are 10 times more likely to be hired than someone who only applies online. And so even if you're stuck on the outside today, kind of looking through the tech glass, if you will, building those bonds to people on the inside will really pay off once you start applying. While career fairs and mutual connections are a great place to start, Schiefling says use technology to your advantage. Create a LinkedIn account and use the platform to connect with people outside of your typical network or geographical area. I think the smartest job seekers or would-be entrepreneurs are going onto a site like LinkedIn, which has more than 800 million professionals, and saying, who can I learn from? Is there someone who's already taken the plunge or already leapt into entrepreneurship that I could reach out to? Maybe who went to the same school as me or worked at a similar company in the past so I can learn from their experience before I go down this road. Schiefling also recommends using this specific platform to reach out to anyone at any company. If you want to reach out to anyone on LinkedIn, you can obviously send them a connection request and personalize that, but you're limited to only 300 characters and they might never see your message because maybe they have all their LinkedIn messages going to spam. Instead, if you use a tool like hunter.io, you can actually look up their real world email address, which we all know they're checking 10 or 20 times a day. And so that way you're sure to get through. And when you do get through, you know, don't just come out and say, hey, give me a job. Instead, say, give me a chance to learn from you. You know, as someone who's been in my shoes, maybe went to the same school or started on the same path, I would love nothing more than to learn from your expertise. And for pretty much any alum, any professional out there, that's catnip. That's a chance to pay it forward to the next generation. So that's the way you should reach out. There's no doubt that it can be overwhelming to jump from a comfortable job into a setting where you're starting anew and constantly learning. However, he says this period right now is the best time to make that switch if you're thinking about it. Even though things are really sunny right now, there are rain clouds on the horizon, and you can actually see them drifting in straight from the tech industry. So as good as tech has been for the last decade or so, financially, hiring-wise, all of a sudden, the stock market is really down in terms of tech stocks, anywhere from 25 to 75%. And so I do think that as the sort of injection of federal funds starts to diminish and things start to come back to earth in terms of the gravity of regular economics, there will be tougher times ahead. That's why I really encourage your listeners, if you want to make a move, now is the time. Don't wait three months. Don't wait six months. Go for it when the iron is hot. And then be prepared to really double down in that space if those rain clouds do move in so that even if you end up staying at that role, you're going to be really happy there. You're going to be learning there and you're going to be succeeding and setting yourself up for the next adventure. To find out more about this topic and our guest, Jeremy Schiefling, visit viewpointsradio.org. For more behind the scenes, search Viewpoints Radio on Twitter and Facebook. This segment was written and produced by Amira Zaveri. I'm Gary Price. Coming up on Viewpoints. My cucumbers that I grew this year, I sliced the first one and I was so proud and they were not that big, but they were so tasty. Think gardening's not for you? Think again. Then. I'm seeing a lot of crowds in Europe and it's not even peak season yet. I mean, people are traveling with a vengeance. The excitement of heading abroad once again. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. And 
That's Viewpoints for this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more about upcoming shows and find a library of past programs on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and more information about our guests at viewpointsradio.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Viewpoints. Viewpoints.